Right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the pressure inside of a drop of water, or um, also we'll talk about a, a soap bubble. Um, so to start off with, um, doing a, a little infinitesimal uh, bit of work on the system, uh, this is what what we have in the case of a, of a drop of water. So this PDV, as you probably recognize, um, the minus sign is here because due to the way pressure is defined, which is opposite to all of these other um, types of forces, uh, the pressure, um, basically to do work on the system, we make the volume smaller rather than larger. All right, so we have this minus sign. Um, we're increasing the internal energy when we make the volume smaller. Uh, so, but so this one that you recognize, uh, you know, ideal gas, whatever, whatever. This one though is actually the surface tension and uh, a differential element of area. So there's no minus sign here, right? So we actually increase the energy of the system by stretching it. So we're making the area larger. All right, so. DA is positive, and we have a, a, a plus sign here. All right, so we're going to ask the question, how much higher is the pressure inside a drop of water than um, just the outer air around it? All right, so um, uh, basically, one way we can do this is we know the atmospheric pressure will also add to the pressure inside the bubble. So, um, just disregarding atmospheric pressure, um, subtracting it from both the inside and outside, I guess you could say, uh, we can just find the additional pressure inside this uh, water, drop of water. All right. Okay. All right, so here we go. Um, for equilibrium, uh, these two quantities will reach a point where they're going to balance. And uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, dW, right, for our, our work is going to equal zero. And so uh, what that tells us is that uh, PDV for the bubble is, or for the, that we're doing a water drop first, is equal to um, sigma dA. Okay, so again, this is uh, for equilibrium, all right? So if, if it weren't in, uh, if, uh, yeah, anyway. We, we don't get any work out of it. We, we can't get any work out of it uh, because it's in equilibrium. All right. Um, all right, so, so uh, uh, what we're going to do is just uh, look at the, the volume and the area here. And um, we're going to look at that in terms of the radius of this drop of water. Right, so for a sphere, we know that the volume is equal to four thirds pi times the radius cubed, and the area is equal to four pi r squared. All right, so uh, turning these into differential uh, equations or whatever, we have a, a dv on this side, all right, and then a four thirds pi, and then we'll have a three r squared dr. So just taking the derivative with respect to r, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and write this out because we can get rid of this three. So four pi r squared dr. All right. Now the area. We go ahead and do the same sort of thing. Uh, we'll get an 8 pi r dr. 
Okay, so now taking our, uh, our equation up here and just plugging in these two pieces, uh, now we'll see what we get. So uh, plugging in for uh, dv, we have uh, uh, 4 pi r squared. Uh, then we'll have this uh, p from up here and a dr. And then over here we have the, so we'll have this 8 pi r. We'll have our sigma dr. All right. So uh, this tells us if we if we go through take out our various uh, pieces. Um, we'll get a two here. All right. If we can pick through this and find uh, the pieces that are left, we have uh, a p here, and then here we have a two. We still have our sigma. And then uh, we'll have this R that we can bring downstairs. All right, so when the smoke clears, we're just left with this uh, pressure. All right, so uh, this is in addition to whatever the atmospheric pressure is, okay? Or I don't know, if you, if you have a, a drop of water in a vacuum, all right, doesn't, yeah, it would start to boil and stuff. just neglecting the atmospheric pressure, okay? Uh, it will be this much greater than the, the surrounding pressure. So we see there's a, a one over R dependence. So for tiny, tinier and tinier bubbles, we get higher and higher pressure, I, I, I guess, or, or drops of water in this case, all right? So looking at the case of a bubble, um, we, uh, rather than uh, just one interface that we're dealing with, so suppose we were to, we have a bubble, so it's air inside and outside, but there's a very thin bubble skin. All right, now we have two interfaces to, to deal with. So to create, uh, we have to put in twice as much work to, to expand the bubble because we're, we're, we're stretching both of the interfaces. All right, so uh, basically there would just be, you know, you could, you could have two terms like this. And again, we're supposing that it's a thin bubble, right? So these are basically at the same radius, right? So we're not really taking into account the difference in, in the radius because the difference in the radius here is much, much smaller than the size of the whole bubble. All right, so uh, um, I don't know, save paper or what. Uh, so this is a drop, okay, and for a bubble, the the additional pressure in addition to atmospheric pressure would be four sigma. Separate this off with a nice line. All right, so there we go.